What you see above me right now, above me and to my left, I have wanted to build for years. I have imagined it with like a yardstick and a yardstick and strings hanging down below, but I am not a carpenter. I'm not a smithy of any kind. The only things I build are things of the mind. And so here it is, I have built it, a visualization of what multiplication is. I've done a series before on what multiplication is. I'll probably put a card, I don't know, right or left, some corner of the screen right now, where I try to justify things like, why on earth is a negative times a negative a positive. And although we can do this while still thinking of multiplication as essentially repeated addition, multiplication is more than just repeated addition, and so a fuller understanding of what it actually is helps us understand why things like a negative times a negative is a positive. One of my favorite ways to think about multiplication is in terms of what's called scaling. Wait, hold on. Welcome to today's Math Minute, only Math Minute guaranteed to be today, guaranteed to be no more than 10 minutes long, and guaranteed to blow your mind about multiplication. Multiplication. So again, my preferred method for thinking about multiplication is not to think of it in terms of repeated addition, although certainly for integers, multiplication will give the same answer as repeated addition. Instead, there are so many more things we can do with multiplication and so many better ways to understand it, particularly trying to understand things like why would one negative number times another negative number actually return a positive product? That's really strange. And of course, many operations don't work this way at all. If you add two negatives together, you don't get a positive number back, you get what you would expect. You get a different negative number back. Negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. They get more negative. They move down the number line. If we understand, though, that multiplication represents scaling, I think we can get a sense of just why it is that multiplying a negative number times a negative number should actually return a positive number. So I want you to imagine, take a look at this lower number line here. This lower number line represents the result of multiplication. Right now, I've got a scale factor of 1. So of course, everything on the top number line corresponds directly to everything on the bottom number line. But as I change my scalar, as I change this multiplication factor, to, let's say, 2. You can see that the number line begins to stretch out because now I need 1 to map onto 2, and 2 to map onto 4, and 3 to map onto 6. Of course, 0 is the only point on the number line that's going to stay fixed this entire time. Anything times 0 is 0. And then to the left on the number line, you can see that it is also spreading out, just spreading out in the opposite direction. Negative 1 maps onto negative 2 negative two maps onto negative four, and so on. If we make our scalar larger, it just increases the scale on that bottom number line, and of course we can make it very, very large, and as we do that, that lower number line just spreads out further and further. On the other hand, we can also pick scalars that are still positive, but between zero and one, and what that's going to cause is this number line to collapse and get smaller and smaller until when our scale factor becomes zero itself, everything maps onto zero at that point. This is also the key. You can tell what's going to happen next as I continue to move this slider further and further to the left, as I make my scalar smaller and smaller, not just to the point where it becomes zero, but actually to go even beyond that into the negatives, the entire number line flips around. What's happening when we multiply by a negative scalar, something like, say, negative 2, is on the one hand, we are scaling that bottom number line out by a factor of 2. Something of magnitude 1 now maps onto something of magnitude 2. Something of size 4 now maps onto something of size 8. But the negative on that scalar is also telling us you need to reverse the entire number line. You need to flip that number line around. Like I said, I used to want to build this out of like a yardstick over a yardstick with a bunch of threads connecting them. And as you imagine flipping that bottom number line, all the threads become jumbled together at this point in the middle, just like you can see here. But of course, threads don't actually like elongate as you need them to the way that this slider in Desmos that I've built can do. But hopefully this helps you visualize just why it is when we take a number that is originally negative and we scale it by some negative scalar, that scalar tells us, okay, take what was on the left side of the number line and flip that around over to what is now the right side of the number line, meaning a negative initial number times some kind of negative scalar is going to result in products that are in fact positive. If you would like to check this 
this graph out yourself and play around with it or use it to, you know, evangelize to people about multiplication, you can check out the link that is above me right now, bit.ly slash scaling the number line, capital S, capital N, capital L, the capital letters do matter for bit.ly links. I will also put that link in the description down below if you would like to check it out. I'm always supposed to give you a prompt to comment on, so let's see, how about you comment down below with your favorite metaphor for multiplication? I prefer this idea of scaling, but maybe you've seen something different. Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe, do all that stuff, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.